Yo guys, how are you all doing? My name is Alex, here for TechFlow, and how do you like this brand new set? Take a look at this. We've been putting this together for the past sort of week. I'm actually in my home office uh, right now, so you're going to have to let me know what you think of this shop. As usual, a huge thanks to Squarespace for working with us on today's episode, and since my last smart home video, which you guys absolutely loved, and thanks for the support on that, this is a roundup, if you like, my top five favourite smart home automations that I use on the daily in my house. So at some point, pretty much in every single day, I do two things. One of those is take a shower, and the other one is listen to music. Now, if I can combine those two things, we've got a winning formula. And for ages, I did. I was using a Logitech UE Boom speaker with Bluetooth to my phone, and I was listening to music in the shower that way. Now, everything's fine until you're listening to your Spotify playlist, and a song comes on that you don't really want to listen to. But you've got your hands full of soap, and they're really wet, and you don't want to touch your phone to skip the song. Now, we've done a video on this. In the ceiling of my ensuite, I have some light speakers, and these are actually network-connected smart speakers that have their own IP address and live on the network, and you can, well, stream to them via things like Spotify Connect, which is what I mainly do. That means that I can use a Fabaro button, which is, well, positioned right next to the shower so I can, well, easily access it. One tap of this button goes ahead and sends a command to the speakers to skip the current song playing. Now the button does a few more things in the bathroom other than just next song. So if you click the button twice, it will actually turn on the lights in the bathroom. And if you click the button three times, it will actually turn the lights on, but at a dimmer state. And then if you go ahead and hold the button, it will turn off the music and turn off the lights. All of this is programmed in the Fabaro Home Center. Now, if you're not sure on what Fabaro is, we have also done a dedicated video on that. So you can click the button in the card up there, or I'll put a link in the description. The Fabaro Home Center system is awesome. Okay, so coming in at number two, we've got my simple good morning routine, and I activate this via my Google Assistant. But my good morning routine is set up in the Google app, and basically all I do is I say good morning, and a string of things happen. I'm really not sure of the order that it does the next things in, but what it does then is turns my computer on upstairs, it puts the blinds on, it turns on the set lights in the office, it sets the kitchen lights to ice white, it plays BBC Radio 1 out the smart speaker so I can, well, listen to the news in the morning, and it brews my kettle for me. That is set up in the Google Home app, and it's basically just a command, string of words put together, and then this happens. It's that simple. Say this, this happens. Coming in at number three, we've got my garden lights, or automatic lighting. I think it's really, really important. Number one, from a cost-saving perspective and from a safety perspective. So I'm gonna focus on my outdoor lighting. The way I do outdoor lighting is I run all of my outdoor lights on 240 volts, back to a fused spur, which is what one of these looks like, and then that just spits out a normal UK plug. What I can then do is use a smart plug to simply toggle on and off the power to the ring which controls the lights. It's really, really that simple. Now for me, I actually use the Fabaro system to manage all of my outdoor lights and I've set up a couple of scenes in my home center. So basically my home center knows when the sun is setting, what time that is every day because it changes every day, it live updates. So the home center knows when sunset is and as soon as sun sets, it turns on all of the outdoor lights. And I think there's three or four different outdoor light rings that I've got around this house. And they're all controlled by their individual plugs. Now, I don't leave the lights on all night because obviously that's just wasting energy. They turn off about 11.30 p.m. And again, that's just set up as a scene in the home center to turn all the outdoor lights off at 11.30. And I also have it ping me a message to my phone as well so I know that the lights have been turned on and the lights have been turned off. Thank you. 
Okay, coming up at number four, we've got motion sensors. Now, you can use any type of motion sensor you would like. However, because I have the Fabaro system in my house, I use the Fabaro motion sensors. And to be honest, I really quite like them. They're battery powered and really, really small. You can see one up here, which controls a few things in my kitchen. Now, if you've been a fan of me for some time and you've seen clips around my house, you'll know that I kind of like neon and LED lights. LED lights, like you can see behind me super super cheap to run which is great but neon lights it's kind of the other end of the spectrum and I've got two in my kitchen I've got the cinema light above the cinema room door and I've also got the who made the rule sign now a simple smart plug connecting to both of these neon lights is controlled by that motion sensor that's in the kitchen and it turns off after I think three to five minutes so the neon lights are only on if there's somebody present in the kitchen. Now with the Fabaro motion sensors that I use, the motion sensors are sort of multi-purpose. So they can trigger certain scenes like turning on and off the neon lights, like I've just mentioned, but they're also, well, because they're motion sensors, they can just be security alarms too. So if I arm my home center in the app, basically all of the motion sensors around the house, one in the kitchen, one upstairs, and one in the garage will alert me to my phone with a push notification as soon as any motion is detected. Love love, big love for motion sensors. Now on your screen right now, you can see a couple of websites which were all built on Squarespace and all these websites are actually owned by me. That's right, I have been a paying Squarespace customer for I think the last five to seven years. Absolutely love them. What are they all about? Well, basically if you want a website, build it on Squarespace. Basically, you just choose one of the thousands of templates that they've got, which look amazing, and then you can upload all of your own stuff to that template. It's really, really simple. However, if you want a little bit more of a less simple experience and you know what you're doing, you can go in on Squarespace and look at things like HTML and add that. You can go into the back end. They've got things like SEO, so you can see how your website's gonna appear on certain search engines. And they even sort out the domain, which is actually the website name you know, the www bit. It's all under one umbrella with Squarespace and that's what I really like. If you guys would like to save yourself 10%, use code TECHFLOW or just simply go to squarespace.com forward slash TECHFLOW. Cheers Squarespace for sponsoring the video. Now, last but not least, we've got my Yale Smart Lock. And I almost have a little bit of a love-hate relationship with this piece of tech. Now, it's super, super expensive, and don't let that put you off because I think security is really, really important. So essentially, this lock allows me to, well, see if it's locked or unlocked via an app on my phone. And it also allows me to create digital keys, which you can have on your phone. So let's say I'm the other side of the world and somebody needs to get into my house with this Yale smart lock, I can send them a virtual key and then they can gain access to the house. Now with this really expensive Yale smart lock, I should note that you do have to buy an extra little Yale module, they call them, which fits inside the smart lock. And basically this enables your already really expensive smart lock to actually be smart and communicate with a home center or something like Samsung Smart Things, for example. And that is how this lock can access the internet. But there you guys have it. That's been my, well, top five most used smart home automations. I absolutely love my smart home from a convenience and security perspective. And I think I think a lot of the things in this list were about that, other than the shower speaker situation at the start. But with that being said guys, my name's been Alex, this has been Techflow, and we'll catch you in the next one. Peace.